Okay, well, I'm answering the question for you, how to make Italian tomato sauce. Now, this is a very touchy subject that a lot of people have an opinion about, and most of them are right in just about all the cases. There's a few little variations on this theme, but basically, it usually boils down to a little bit of olive oil with some diced onions cooked, with some basil and or oregano, and some tomatoes added to it, and some garlic, and more olive oil, and salt and pepper. And that's a basic tomato sauce. And we're going to make one of those for you first, OK? So we're going to take a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. I recommend extra virgin for just about everything that calls for olive oil, OK? And in the case of making a Italian um, tomato sauce, they like it a little bit oily, and uh, it tastes more Italian if you make it a little bit oily. So sometimes, even after you finish the sauce, you just pour some oil in and mix it in, and it makes it good. We're gonna add onion. And this sauce is incredibly quick to make, by the way. Unlike the French uh, tomato sauce, which takes a little bit longer. Uh, you can probably make this whole sauce in 10 minutes. Because unless you are cooking some kind of meat in it, that would require longer cooking to release the flavors from the meat into the sauce, there's nothing gained by cooking the tomato sauce very long other than it makes it not so red. And you don't want that. You want it nice and red so it looks like tomato. So we're going to take some fresh basil. And you certainly can use dried basil. And the sauce will still come out good. I think fresh basil I might make have it feel a little bit fresher to you, you know? Now, I couldn't get any fresh oregano this morning where I went, so I got some of this oregano that they packed in a little bit of water, okay? So we're going to use some of that. And we're going to use some fresh ground pepper on the onions. And we're going to cook the onion a little bit. We're going to chop. Let's throw the oregano in there, too. One of the questions we're going to answer when we make this tomato sauce here is, what should the texture of the tomato sauce be? This is certainly up for grabs, and it would depend on the cook. I will show you what I think is an uh, a nice texture, and that's one, first of all, a texture that's completely pureed. To me, that's more like pizza sauce, and that's okay. But uh, it wouldn't be my general approach to making Italian tomato sauce. I want a little bit of chunk inside my tomato sauce. Now, sometimes you can add a fresh diced tomato to the sauce when you're done. That makes it kind of nice, too, you know? But I still wouldn't puree it smooth. So we'll chop up the basil. Notice how I roll the basil up in a ball when I go to chop it. So instead of having it all over the board, I can whiz through this stuff in you know, a couple of quick motions here, and it's done. See? Boom. we got chopped basil. So we'll throw that in there. Now, whenever you use canned, diced, or whole pear tomatoes, whatever you choose to use to make your tomato sauce, one of the things you want to make sure that you do is that you want to make sure that the, get, let me have a spoon, Richard, would you please, a solid one. Um, one of the things you want to make sure you do is reserve the juice from uh, the can because you want that as part of the sauce. That will help your texture, see? Okay, so we've got, let me bring this over. We got onions, olive oil, basil, oregano, pepper in here. That's it. And we will need a little bit of sugar to season this up. I'm going to put a pinch of salt in here, not that much, just to get it going. And that's cooked enough for me. Now I'm going to take a quart and a half or so of tomatoes. Ah, go for it. We'll do it all. And one of the things that the Italians do is they have a tendency to enhance certain tomato sauces with dried red chilies, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little bit of dried red chilies in here. It gives it a little bit of bite. You put a lot of dried red chilies in here. They call this a Diablo sauce or deviled sauce in Italian, if you will. Deviled meaning hot in this case, OK? So we'll put a few dried chilies in here. I forgot the garlic. Let's get that garlic in there right now. You should put the garlic in just before you put the tomatoes in. Let me, since I didn't mix them in, let's smash the garlic down in there a little bit. Just want it to cook a little bit in oil before you add the tomatoes, but that's okay. 
Remember what I told you before. I'm not fixing any mistakes in this DVD course by me by taking another take. We will not do that. We will show you how to adjust it as we go along. Once in a while, that's not a mistake. I just forgot to put it in there. That's different. How's that for coverage, okay? All right, now, we got your garlic in there and your tomatoes. We're going to bring this up at a high temperature. As soon as it comes to a simmer, and I don't want to cook this thing to death. I want the basil to feel fresh in it. I want the onion to feel a little fresh. And I don't want to kill the tomato. And I certainly don't want to over puree it, okay? As soon as this comes up to a simmer, which is going to be in about a minute, I'm going to hit this with a little portable blender stick I've got. And these are neat. Neat little tools, and they're good for this kind of thing. If you don't have something like this and you have a blender, what you would normally do is you would take this, transfer it to the blender, sometimes in batches, pulse it until you give it to the right texture, then put it back in the saucepan. This uh, eliminates that whole step, having a little portable blender, so you just walk over to it and do it. These are very easy to clean, too. You just dip them in a little bit of water. We'll rinse them off, and they're ready to go for the next puree. Okay, this is coming up to a simmer now. Now I'm going to go through this and give this what I call a, uh, a semi-zap because we don't want to kill it. It's not that deep in tomatoes, so I'm going to tilt it back so it's deeper. right there and we're going to take a peek at the sauce we got the, still got the fire off all the way see I like my sauce with pieces of tomato in it you see here that's kind of nice it's, you, know, you make them it's just again we're looking at the texture of the sauce if you go back to the whole lecture that I gave you about the recipe for recipes, it's the taste, the texture, the portion size, the temperature, and the presentation. Those five will always determine the final outcome of how your food's experienced through the other people that you feed. And um, in the case of the sauce, let's just take and follow through on that recipe for recipes for a second. Obviously, the taste of the sauce is important, but the texture, which is what I'm talking about right now, and then we want to make sure that it's hot when you get it on the plate, and then the freshness value that I'm speaking about, which refers to not cooking this to death because there's nothing to gain by doing so, makes it look better, which I'm actually addressing the presentation at the same time. And then the amount that goes on a plate or in a pasta bowl or wherever it, you end up putting it is, you know, obviously the fifth primary element of the recipe for recipes. So, so in effect, every time I make something, I'm always thinking about those five, but I do it naturally. I don't refer back and say, okay, the recipe for recipes, but that's what you should be doing on, on the, on the, if you're you know, just learning how to cook now, that's the best way to go about it. Process it through those five things. There was a point which I did that all the time. I processed through all five of those things, one at a time while I was cooking. Every time I did that, the food came out a little bit better, by the way. Let's just take a quick, this came back to a simmer. I need some of the sugar, Richard. We got some sugar around. I'm going to season this with a little bit of sugar, and I'm going to show you something about, that you can do with the tomato sauce, which you probably won't see in a book very much, but if you think it's watery and you don't want to reduce it because you don't want to change the color, just put a little teeny weeny weeny bit of cornstarch in it, just enough so you don't have any water separation inside the sauce, okay? That just about did it. One teeny weeny little, little uh, tablespoon, actually. Let's try that again. Let's go one more tablespoon in that whole big pot. And that kind of rounds out the... Quickly, quickly round out the texture of it for you. So you don't have to keep cooking it to death. Let me see here. That's good enough for me. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take and... Uh, We'll set the pot down right here so you can get a close look at it. This is a sauce that people, a lot of people have an interest in this particular sauce, but you just saw how long it took me to make it, and it just doesn't take that long. Now, 